2024 has already become one of the best years for metal in a long time. Yeah, unbelievable. And although the first part of it has given the fans some of the most anticipated tours in decades, the remainder of 2024 promises to be no less hot. So, these are the 10 most excited metal tours of this autumn and winter that you absolutely should not miss. Here you go. One of the best trends of the post-COVID era in metal is the one with massive co-headliner tours, which 2024 will still have plenty of in the coming months. In just a couple of days, Swedish melodic death metal pioneers Dark Tranquility will kick off their joint run with a no less amazing amorphous throughout the North America. And given the fact that Dark Tranquility have just released their new album End Time Signals, I assume it most likely will be them who will be closing the set on most nights. Although, of course, both of those bands are equally awesome in their own merits. The last day of August will bring the start of what possibly is the most anticipated classic heavy metal co-headliner tour of the year, in which the legendary KK Downing's new band KK's Priest will join forces with the German powerhouse Accept on their full Metal Assault Tour 2024, on which the bands will give 28 co-headline concerts, starting with the two shows in Los Angeles, California, and going through pretty much all of the United States until making a full circle with the last show on October 7th in San Francisco. And I don't know about you, but at least to me, the whole idea of seeing the two legendary guitarists on the same stage in 2024 is simply mind-blowing. So if you do have a chance of seeing this tour and you're still contemplating whether to do that or not, I honestly simply can't even understand what you're thinking about. Just fuck do it! Because even though, of course, technically one of these bands is possibly one of the youngest heavy metal bands out there on the planet, it is still rather hard to imagine a bill which can possibly give a stronger punch of this classic heavy metal sound than these two acts today. <laughs> Twenty Twenty Four marks the 40th anniversary of Wasp's legendary debut album with the same title, and in order to celebrate this milestone, Blakey Lawless and the team are getting ready to perform it in its entirety for the very first time ever on their album One Alive tour this autumn. Now, for those who missed it, the original support act announced for this run was the band Death Angel. Yet the boys had to drop from this tour last minute, most likely because of the fact that the band's vocalist Marcus Segata had a conflict schedule with his new job at Carrie King's new solo project, which resulted in quite a drama in the heavy metal community. And so instead of Death Angel, it will be Armored Saint who joined Wasp on this tour, which of course does not make it any less special for all the Wasp fans in North America, with the only question remaining is whether they will actually take it across the pond to Europe as well next year. Continuing the trend of massive co-headlining metal tours, melodic death metal legends in flames are joining forces with nobody else but Arch Enemy and even more, taking Soil Work as their special guest for a Rising from the North tour across Europe, which will commence with a show at O2 Academy in Glasgow on October 3rd and will end on November 5th in Helsinki. And now, you don't really even have to be a fan of In Flames or Arch Enemy separately, but I'm pretty sure that if you look into it, it is actually considered a felony for a melodic death metal fan to skip a tour like this in at least a couple of states. On September 12th, Korn will kick off their massive North American tour with the support from Gojira and Spirit Box. And it is on this tour when Korn will celebrate their 30th anniversary with an already almost sold out show at the BMO Stadium in Los Angeles, which promises to feature many guest appearances by the band's friends. 
and even more. This tour will feature the first live shows by Gajira since their triumphant performance at this year's Olympic opening ceremony, which definitely adds interest to this massive tour from a mainstream audience and media around the world. After a short, just a couple of weeks long break, Judas Priest will hit the road once again with their Invincible Shield World Tour, once again visiting North America with Sabaton as their opening act. Now, I don't think that I have to go on selling this tour to this channel's viewers, yet just once again want to underline how extraordinary this band sounds in 2024, on the 55th year of their existence. And the interesting thing here is that given the whole fact that Judas Priest have finally released the first two songs from the first legs of the Invincible Shield World Tour, and which of course has been done on purpose to promote the next leg of the tour, but knowing how much this band likes surprising their fans, it actually opens the door of opportunities for Judas Priest to perform some of the songs they've never played before, especially from their latest studio output on this next leg of the tour, making it rather exciting even for those fans who have already seen Judas Priest live just a couple of months ago. The last, but definitely not the least of the co-headlining tours this autumn, at least out of those which I'm super bummed I won't be seeing live because of one mad dictator's ambitions, is creator's massive Clash of the Titans run, or I guess runs, first with Testament across the United States and then later a co-headlining tour across Europe with Anthrax and Testament as a special guest. Now, I don't know about you, but honestly, at least to me this sounds like THE thrash metal tour of the year despite the whole fact that Metallica, Megadeth and even Kerry King are on the road in 2024. By the way, guys, here I just want to point out that if by any chance you would like to support the Metal Pilgrim show and rock some Metal Pilgrim merch on one of these tours that you're about to attend, including, for example, the new design of a Dark Mafka that I have right here, you can actually order it at metalpilgrim.net. And just in case if you decide to do that, thank you. Because, yeah, that actually does mean quite a lot to me. Iron Maiden's The Future Past Tour has become one of the most discussed events of 2023, and not really because of the massive production or the incredible support acts, but rather because it has become a tour of deep cuts that the Maiden fans have been begging the band to perform for years, and while last year only some Europeans, as well as the selected few of the North American fans were able to enjoy it, this year Iron Maiden are making The Future Past Tour truly global, including their return to Australia and Oceania who haven't been able to enjoy Iron Maiden for more than five years already. And here I just want to be a responsible fan, so in case you're planning to attend the shows in Oceania and you want to be absolutely surprised by the setlist and the production of this tour, just skip to the next part of this video. But for everybody else, from the recent interviews by both Nick McBrain and Steve Harris, it does look like the next leg of the Future Pass tour will feature exactly the same setlist and exactly the same production that the band has had on the previous leg of it in 2023. Which, in my opinion, just once again makes this tour a tour for all of the real die-hard Iron Maiden fans. For all of those boys and girls who for years have been imagining how it would be like to hear Alexander the Great lie, or how it would be like to be headbanging to Stranger in a Strange Land, finally being performed live again from the stage. So in case if you are one of those, the Future Past Tour this year is definitely one of those tours that you simply cannot skip, especially if you were not able to attend it in 2023, because this actually might be one of the last opportunities for all of us Iron Maiden fans to experience some of those songs live. While Exodus being on the road is nothing extraordinary by itself, there is something unique about their upcoming 2024 North American run with Havoc. 
this tour will mark the first headline and run for Exodus in years. And given the fact that, in my opinion, Exodus is one of those bands who should be given way more praise than they currently receive, I am sure that the thrash metal pioneers will use it to do something special, including playing some of the deep cuts which no one has heard live for decades, yet without which thrash metal would not be the same. <laughs> And the last one on this list is the one which everyone loves to hate, yet which in all seriousness is a pretty interesting move. A retrospective Slipknot tour on which the band plays only their debut album to celebrate its 25th anniversary, and which if you're a fan of this band I guess is a huge deal and is one of those tours that you definitely don't want to skip. I know I wouldn't if my favorite band would do something similar, with my only question being whether 14 songs is not too short of a set list. Yet, other than that, it is definitely worth seeing live just to be able to tell that you did it years from now. But anyways, which of these tours are you actually planning to attend and which other ones would you include in this list? Please let us know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching this short video, guys, and more than anything, thank you so much for supporting me this show in Ukraine through this very, very difficult time. We will prove it. Slava Ukraine!